Death Row with Death Row TV, and I'm back again with another review. And this week we're going to be taking on a Peter Jackson first movie, or well, first feature film, really, called Bad Taste from 1987. But before I get started on this review, remember to like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification bell so you can see other obscure stuff that I might be uh, partaking in later. And before I, also, before I get started with this review, I would like to say that I will also be joining two friends of mine on After the Weekend to watch or go through and review The Frighteners, another Peter Jackson film that is really great, and uh, one of my favorites, actually, and uh, one of the last films that uh, Michael J. Fox actually uh, acted in as well. So... Without further ado, this is Bad Taste, 1987, starring none other than Terry Potter as Ozzy, uh, Peter, or Pete O'Hearn as Barry, Craig Smith as Giles, Mike Minette as Frank, and Peter Jackson himself as the chainsaw-wielding Derek. And he also plays one of the aliens. Well, they, they kind of all do. Uh, yeah, so... A lot of them were pulling double double duty on this movie, as you will see for yourself. And here we we have uh, Barry, and they're at, like in this little town on the uh, edge of a you know close to where a beach is, and where this is filmed at, I guess is is Makara Beach in New Zealand, and like a lot of uh, Peter Jackson's films, everything was filmed in New Zealand. Uh, no different from like Wellington, New Zealand is where he filmed uh, Brain Dead, aka Dead Alive, The Frighteners, uh, and of course you got Lord of the Rings, or that whole entire trilogy which he did in New Zealand. But uh, yeah, this little town right here uh, is deserted. And uh, Basically, at the very beginning of the movie, they get a call from their, I guess, their uh, employer of some sort. And, and, and these guys go are supposed to go into this town and clear it out of any dangers or whatever. Not really, they don't really explain in detail, like, what they, or what organization they belong to or anything like that. So, and like I said, this is kind of a horror slash dark humor, humorous, you know, comedy. Like I said, he's like in this little town. And like, you have this weird dude here that has a hand that's actually a finger and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, you don't ever see his face, but it's kind of funny how this starts. But he actually is the one that calls up these guys to go into this town and find out what's going on and take care of anything that might be amiss. And... That's where you see Barry is in the town, and this one, <laughs> this one guy is following Barry around. It, essentially, what it is is these aliens have landed, and they have turned this whole town into food, and taken their skin as a disguise. And here you see uh, Peter Jackson himself playing Derek. Uh, he's up on the top of the hill from where the town is looking over trying to uh, tell Barry where to go next and like basically like playing a lookout and uh, he, he apparently has one of the aliens tied to a rope hanging down from the cliff that he's standing on as you can see here and the, that is also Peter Jackson hanging from the uh, rope by the ankle <laughs> Uh, and another thing about this film, it took it took them four years to uh, complete this film because they mostly did it on the weekend as a side as as their project. And if I understand correctly, according to some of the stuff I've read, uh, they started off with a budget of like twenty five thousand, and then uh, essentially the New Zealand government. Uh, put down three hundred thousand to 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 complete 
the uh, movie, get it all the way to completion. And this movie started out as just wanting to be a short film, and it turned into a full feature film by the time uh, Peter Jackson was done with it. So, yeah, he spent an entire four years working on this thing, and the, the, the special effects are just cool to see. I, you know it's fake, but it's still cool to see. They're very Savini-like, and, and even Peter Jackson said that he was inspired by Tom Savini to do the, the effects this way. The, the makeup effects and the, uh, the gore. The gore kind of reminds me of like stuff you would see in like an anime with the blood just spurting out and that kind of crap. Anyway. So Peter Jackson is holding Peter Jackson hostage by a rope hanging over the side of the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Derek and an alien, essentially. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it. So yeah, Barry's running around this little town trying to find somebody that might still be alive, and he hasn't found anybody yet. But if he did find some uh, aliens that decided to grab him and pull him into that little shed, and he try he makes his a little escape to try to get away from him. Like I said, these are not uh, humans anymore. Um, they are aliens using human skin. Reminds me of a Doctor Who episode, actually. Kind of wonder if they. Uh, the one of the I think it's the Lieutenant era, where people, uh, certain people in the government were aliens in the human skin. If you remember that episode, Lieutenant, I want to think. I don't know which came first. I mean, obviously this movie came first, but. This movie reminds me, it's like they took an ep that episode, it's like you take that episode of Doctor Who and uh, the movie Signs and combine them together. Because basically these aliens are here to harvest the humans. Little we'll snap burgers. And a uh, cool car here, a little Ford Capri. And this, is, uh, this has uh, Frank and uh, Frank and Ozzy in it is the other two characters the other two part of the elite force that's coming in here to take care of the aliens <laughs> oh i do like the color of that uh, purple capri I mean, i've never never seen that color before pretty cool little car but of course it's called the ford capri in new zealand australia and, and uk but uh for your american watchers that is the uh mercury capri that we the version that we got over here in America. And he's talking to them, trying to uh, tell them to head this way. And they don't think he's being, you know, they think he's exaggerating what's going on in that little town because he, he likes to get deep into the whole alien stuff. And uh, Frank Frank and uh, Ozzy aren't really taking them all that seriously. It's like, are you just joshing us over there? It's like, that whole town can't just be gone. He's like, yeah, 75 people are not here. This town has a population of 75 people. Something to that effect. So Derek, for some reason, he thinks he, if he goes down to the alien and start to torture him while he's hanging from the rope by his ankle, uh, he might speak and tell him what's going on and where his, you know, where the boss is, basically. So that's what Derek does. He goes down there with a dang, uh, sword of some sort. Uh, I'll get to it. Yeah, here we go. And I almost can't watch this scene because I about, God, I, don't, I couldn't do this. The heights that he's shooting us from and he's just like hanging. From uh, from his ankle? Hell no. I mean, they probably shot it at a certain angle to make it look like it's steeper than it actually is, but still. Yeah, so there's Peter Jackson with a beard, basically, as the <laughs> alien character. And then Peter Jackson right there as Derek. So yeah, he goes down there with this, uh, this, like, bayonet. 
and just sticks it in the heel of his foot and starts hammering it down with a uh, with a hammer <laughs> into the heel of his foot and starts yelling. Well, when that alien starts to yell, the aliens that have been chasing uh, Barry uh, turn around and leave Barry alone and start heading up the hill to go after uh, their uh, their comrade, I guess you could say. Let's see, yeah, see, so he's hammering this uh, bayonet into his damn heel, and he's like, uh <laughs> yeah, some of the, uh, I mean, the way they act is kind of funny, to be honest with you. And they all grab like, some type of sledgehammer or a hammer of some sort and head up on the hill to get after uh, Derek, who's messing with the comrade. But Derek, Derek's got something for him. He's like, I got gotcha. And he pulls out like an Uzi. <laughs> Yeah, it starts trying to blow him down. And this is some of the effects right here that you can see. Now, I didn't show you the first effect. And I, I kind of did that on purpose. Especially for those that haven't seen this movie. The practical gore effects in this movie are are insane and fun to watch in general uh like the very first one you see is the dude that gets his head blown off on the beach the one that was chasing after barry in the very first there with the white hair on his head yeah i didn't want to show that because i didn't want to give that away it's kind of a uh, shock it's the first shock of the movie type deal and i didn't want to you know anyway Kind of similar to how this is a shock. He like the the alien dude just like kind of keeps coming towards him and uh, gets close enough that uh, Derek has to push the gun through his uh, stomach to the other side in order to shoot the next ones that come up. <laughs> kind of funny. Yeah, you see right here. He's like, oh no, there's another one coming, and he has to shoot that one too. He's like, pushes the, pushes the gun all the way through to the other side of his body, and then starts shooting the other guy. <laughs> or the other alien. And at this time, he he's, he's run out of ammo, and he's trying to get, he's got one more clip in the bag, but he can't get to it fast enough before one of the... Uh, Dudes hits it with the sledgehammer out of his hand and knocks it down the hill. So he goes down there, trying to retrieve it. Realizes the other alien has cut himself loose from the rope. And now he's kind of like hanging from that rope. And uh, trying to get the ammo at the same time. Put it in the gun. Shoot him, before, shoot him up the hill before they hit him with the sledgehammer that they're trying to hit him with. And he, he, he gets him, but then he falls down. And as he's falling down, uh, you think this is going to be the end of Derek right here. Ooh, splat. <laughs> you see that big old splash of blood? I think it's him. But it's actually the bird dust he lands on. <laughs> but he does get badly injured in this, as you will see later when we come back to him right there. And we, and we meet uh, Giles here, which is like a, uh, he's like a uh, pamphlet guy, I guess you could say. He's like going around passing out these bags and these pamphlets with the, uh, you know, relief emergency aid stuff. Uh, and he gets caught up in all this mess uh, when uh, that one alien starts to chase him. So yeah, he makes you kind of think he's like a preacher, but he's or a, or a priest. But 
I don't understand why they had them dressed like this and not with the black and the, you know, the white in the center like you normally would. Anyway, he was kind of like headed up there to a house to drop off a wagon. And uh, at this point, Barry is telling uh, Ozzy and Frank that Derek has fallen off the cliff and taken a taking a dive off the cliff pretty much and he don't think he's alive and we cut back to uh giles here he's in the little town he steps on this old dead animal that has been being eaten by you know an alien or some sort let's see here so he goes to his house and there's nobody there it's like he, he doesn't you know, doesn't realize that there's nobody in this town whatsoever. And so he's just kind of roaming around trying to find somebody. And there's the dude with the head blown off that you would have seen in the first part of the movie. And the old, uh, this Peter Jackson alien, the alien that Peter Jackson is playing right here is eating the brains and whatever else he can get out of it. And then it starts to chase Giles away and Giles gets into the vehicle trying to start it up before uh, the alien gets him the flesh the human eating alien they will harvest you anyway he's got his hands stuck in there and so he, he takes off and uh, at first he's not going really fast <laughs> he, he's got the foot down all the way down the gas and he's not moving very fast uh, and he realizes he's got the emergency braking on right there. <laughs> it takes off. Anyway. And we cut back to <laughs> Frank and Ozzy again. They're kind of just sitting around like, hey man, we need to, we need to know where to go. And uh, Barry just tells him to uh, sit put. He's going to be there pretty soon. And meet up with them. Because they got the guns in the back of the, the vehicle that they're going to use. Uh, Giles' car ends up breaking down, so he's having to make his way, and he in, ends up finding like this mansion type place. And uh, the mansion's uh, basically uh, who answers the door, but uh, another alien that's in a human body. And uh, of course, he knocks him out and drags him into the house, old Texas Chainsaw Massacre style here. Not as fast, but you get the idea. And then he wakes up and he's like in this little uh, little pot of water with vegetables and stuff in it. And he's been made into a stew. And <laughs> Giles is. And he finally gets to meet the guy in charge of the aliens. The, the main alien right here, which is uh, Lord Crumb. <laughs> Lord Crumb is like... Uh, you wonder, it's like you wonder why you're in this. Well, you're lunch today, buddy. Anyway, or dinner, or whatever. Yeah, we're back to Derek. Um, it, like we saw from the last time, Derek had fallen off the cliff, and somehow he is not dead. Because, because they, they try to, he tries to play it off like falling on a damn bird nest, you know, a seagull nest, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, broke most of his fall, but it still hit his he still hit his head like really hard on the rocks because he has this big old patch of skull on the back of his head that ends up opening up and his brains spill out. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's about the best way I could. Yeah, that, so yeah, you see that, and then he's like, "Oh, my head hurts." See if I can get a good shot. Oh, there you go. Yeah, those are apparently the birds that he fell on, and like some of the birds squirting blood out of his mouth. <laughs> this is funny. And you, you obviously tell they're not real, but it's funny. And there's that one egg right there in the middle of it all. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so yeah, a piece of uh, Derek's brain fell out all in the rocks there. He tries to like put it back in his head. 
<laughs> oh man, it, you, you'll see what it, kind of a cool effect to be honest with you. It's like, oh my god, it's like this perfect like crack with acts like a freaking door, so you can just put his brain back in his head. How he's even conscious right now? <laughs> oh, it's gross. Oh, but it's, it's fun to watch still. I don't care. Uh, here we go back to uh, Barry here. He's finally meeting up with uh, Frank and Ozzy. And Frank and Ozzy are ready to take on this mansion where uh, Barry has figured out where they're all going, where the, all the townspeople are. And he thinks they're being held hostage, but, you know, we know better than that. And we cut back to uh, Derek. Now he's he he's found <laughs> his vehicle is hidden at the bottom of the uh, ravine where he fell, and he grabs his hat out of the uh, out of his car and puts it on his head to keep his head that little patch on the back of his head closed. He doesn't lose any more brains. Anyway, so yeah, I'll come back to them. They're getting the guns ready to go. Yeah, Lord Crumb talking to his followers. And then that's when uh, Barry, Ozzy, and Frank make their way into the mansion. Incognito, obviously, to try to figure out what's going on. Well, when they first go into the mansion, by the way, let's see if I can show you the shot. Let's show you the shot. Yeah, there's the so all the townspeople are pretty much aliens now they're just aliens in the townsfolk uh skin using their skin as a disguise so yeah you see them sneak trying to sneak into the house without being noticed uh, so it could be like a little surprise attack if they have to right here yeah they get inside and they knock one of the aliens out and uh, one of the guys uh, puts the suit on so they can uh, act like they're gonna be one of them and uh, this one of the aliens ends up puking up a bunch of food <laughs> into a bowl and they, it's like this, this green looking slime stuff with just like uh, throw up chunks in it and they pass it around to eat, to eat, give to eat each other. There it is. It's like, oh, I see carrots in there. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, next morning they're trying to make their way out and they find, that's when they find Giles as well. And they, they spring Giles away from them. And then they go through the house, start shooting them all up. Little practical effects like this is pretty cool. So yeah, um, they got gals now. And so they're trying to rescue gals at the same time, get out of there themselves and make sure they don't mess with any more humans. And we cut back to Derek after he passed out. <laughs> yeah, he, he never made it into his car because he, like, soon right after he put the hat on, for some reason he passed out again. I mean, we know the reason. Apparently, his brain's leaking out, but uh, pieces of it at least. And so, yeah, he finally gets his car out. Let's catch that shot. There we go. So he finally gets his car that's been, like, in a camouflage. And uh, cranks up, starts uh, taking off, and then you, you see what it is, and it's hilarious. <laughs> it's the Beatles cardboard cutout in the window, and he's like driving up. He's like driving like like a captain would a ship, and he's up top looking out a different window at the top. <laughs> it's funny looking. Anyway. Yeah, they're still fighting the aliens at the house at this point, and they're like. 
in different areas of, in and around the house and they having a hard time getting rid of all of them especially the, the stronger ones like this guy here is the one that knocked him out in the front porch and he's coming at him with a machete ends up fighting him for a little while and then uh, we cut back to Derek and it, it right at oh, right at this right as he gets to the house he hears all the gun shots going off and as soon as he pulls up yeah he's got his hat on and everything and he like hears all the gunshots going off so he's going to go back to the car and get his stuff and then as soon as he turns around something's in there. oh he like has another seizure and falls down and passes out again Oh my god, ugh. That's so weird. <laughs> so yeah, now he finally wakes up again. <laughs> They're still, you know, taking care of the aliens up there at the mansion, trying to get to the main boss, which is uh, Lord Chrome, obviously. Uh, and at this point, Derek, he's like, I'm not using the hat. I want to use my belt. So he takes his belt and wraps it around his head and tightens it as much as he can to keep his the back of his head shut. But by the time he gets up off the ground, he realizes he's lost a little bit more brain matter and uh, steps in it. <laughs> right here. It's like, ooh, I stepped in my own brain matter. <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, he finally, Derek finally gets close to the house and he's like, you know, he's, he's drooling over his chainsaw that he keeps in the back of his car. He's like, yep. Kind of harking back to uh, Evil Dead here at this point. And he gets the chainsaw out and starts going towards the uh, mansion where Lord Crumb is. And there's Lord Crumb coming out with a gun. Yeah. And at this point in the game... Um, I'll be honest with you, you don't see the aliens in their true form until the last 20 minutes of the movie. Uh, which, you know, it doesn't bother me all that much. When you finally see them, they're kind of cool looking. Kind of look like a uh, albino, uh, you know, weird ass monkey looking thing, to be honest with you. Uh, like an albino baboon or some shit. But these aliens look all freaky looking, big ass. Because what happens is like some he shoots them up, they they kill enough of them, and they find that they get so angry that they just finally rip the skin off and and basically uh, go after them. And uh, the last one being Lord Crumb here, and so, so now you can see. The alien looks like like uh, like a cross between Harry and the Hendersons and uh, uh it's like you, yeah it's like you took Harry and the from Harry and the Hendersons and uh, shaved all his fur off and this is what you get <laughs> but still cool looking in my opinion uh, so now yeah Roy Crumb has reverted to his uh, real appearance. They got these weird ass big ass butts hanging out the back, and of course his little his uh his little posse here also. <laughs> this is funny. They had the butt stick it out of the pants there. Anyway, oh shit, it's so weird looking. It looks like he's got yeah a scrotum for you know hanging down from his chin. <laughs> anyway, Let's see, they get to the uh, they get to the uh, Ford Capri and start heading, trying to get out of there. They killed enough of them, they think that they, they won't, they may, they might not come back. So at this point, they're just trying to make their escape, and they're shooting down these aliens on the way out. 
And this is, like I said, this is Frank Berry, Ozzy, and Giles in the uh, in the poor Capri trying to make a getaway now. And of course, they don't get too far before the the engine shot, or they sh they shoot the radiator out and uh, have to stop. And that's when uh, he gets the uh, bazooka out and starts uh, shooting shooting at him. <laughs> They really wasn't supposed to use the bazooka, bazooka, but they were like, oh, screw it. And of course the aliens take off in the, the Capri. Well, they don't take off, they just roll down anyway, but... Anyway, as the aliens are in the, the Mercury, I mean, Ford Capri, that's when, uh, yeah, there you go. That's when uh, Ozzy uh, takes a shot at the car with the uh, rocket launcher. Kind of hate to... Oh, there he goes. <laughs> and those aliens are gone. So now, the only alien left is Lord Crom. And guess who's after Lord Crom? Well, Ozzy is with the bazooka, but he misses with the bazooka. Anyway. Here's one of the aliens that ends up... Okay, yeah, this part's pretty cool. My bad. Lord Crumb's not the last alien yet. This one's next to the last, and then he's the last. And this is where uh, Derek comes in. Yeah, Derek's running around in the dang house with a chainsaw. And he's kind of losing his marbles, obviously, because he's lost bits and bits of his brain matter. And he's just kind of going nuts with the chainsaw. And he, he, like I said, you see this one alien, and he gets like stabbed in the back by the chainsaw through the door by Derek. And Derek just splits him in half with the chainsaw and then sticks his head through the door. And uh, Ozzy, Ozzy and uh, uh, Frank here, they're like, ah, uh, Derek's lost his marbles. We need to get the hell out of here. He's about to do something really crazy. And at this point, the uh, house lifts up off the ground because the house ends up being the spaceship, you know, because that's what you do. And uh, supposedly, I mean, Lord Crumb being the last one, he's able to get the spaceship out of there. And the other guys were able to escape. But, Laura Crumb thinks he's in the clear, right? Not so fast, sucker. Derek is in the house. He never left. Yeah, Derek cuts a hole in the second floor of the house, looks down at the alien, and then jumps in, chainsaw first, right into his head. <laughs> <laughs> and then he basically like goes through the top of his head and out the bottom and sure to make the joke I've been reborn <laughs> as he's coming out the bottom end of the alien here <laughs> so, and the house is in space at this point too so the house is a spaceship and it's in space Makes perfect sense. There's uh, <laughs> there's Saturn. It's right there. You don't believe? It's right there. And uh, yeah. So uh, our heroes right here, um, uh, Frank, Barry, Ozzy, and uh, Giles, they basically have to end up using Derek's car to to get out of there now because uh, that's all that's left. And they ride off into the sunset, produced and directed by Peter Jackson. So yeah, let's go back just a little bit before we get to them, because there's always one spot. Here we go. Uh, when Derek finally kills Lord Crumb and his spaceship, the spaceship is still headed to the homeland to, to bring back the uh, human burger supply. And Derek decides to wear Laura Crumb's uh, skin, like they've been wearing human skin, and hold the chainsaw in his hand. He's like, 
I'm coming for you. <laughs> so he's basically, uh, basically uh, dressing up like Lord Crumb so he can make his way into that alien community and start hacking him up with a chainsaw. I mean, he's lost a good part of his brain, so he's gone completely insane at this point, which is kind of the whole point. And then that's when they ride off into the sunset, into the weird uh, Beatles mobile here. And uh, that is the end of this movie, as you can see. Now, what do I think about this movie? This is the first movie that Peter Jackson had filmed as a major film that was released into theaters. Uh, it was originally supposed to be a short film, and it got turned into a major thing, and, and huge. And he played an actual part in it, too. Uh, I don't think he played a this big of a role in another movie except for uh, think here I want to say it was a uh, is a is a mockumentary movie that he did in New Zealand where he plays like a uh, artist where he pretends to play himself as somebody that has come across a treasure trove of films that were supposedly lost uh, to the world. Let's see what the name of it is, and it is called uh, Forgotten Silver, which was done in 1995. So there's another one that he actually acts a little bit more in, too, just as well. Now, I say Bad Taste is the first major movie that he did. It is. Uh, the only thing he did before this movie was a short film called The Valley, which was done in 1976. So it was about 11 years before this, and he did that at the age of 15. So, way to go, Peter Jackson, man. You were all in from early age. I think that's pretty cool. And I love this movie, Bad Taste, to be honest with you. The, the gore effects reminds me a lot of this, like like somebody getting into the Savini era of uh, the gore and the blood spraying and the head exploding and all this other good stuff and the brain matter just falling out of the back of your head. It's crazy. I mean, it's it, but it's still fun to watch because you got to just think to yourself, well, how did they pull that off? You know? So, yeah, I... Deeply respect this movie because of what he was able to achieve with it. And then, I mean, you got to think about it too. If we didn't have bad taste, if he didn't make bad taste or Dead Alive, aka Brain Dead, and uh, The Frighteners or Meet the Feebles and all these other movies, we would never have Lord of the Rings. So, yeah. So. Let's say, that's why I say the music in this movie is pretty, uh, pretty banging too. Uh, I have to admit that. Of course, I like '80s music anyway. But anyway, with that said and done, I'm gonna put this in the critic list score all the way up into the awesome area. I'm not gonna tell you the percentage right now, but I will say it's way up there into. Four and a half stars for me. So it's going to be pretty high, in my opinion. And this 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 is a movie I never get tired of, just because of the, the, the effects that he does, the practical effects that he was able to pull off in this movie. I just don't get tired of watching it. Because you can watch a movie like this and see that everything on there is not, none of it, none of it whatsoever is CGI. Those are fun watches to me. Because that took a lot of work to make, even try to uh, make it look somewhat real, even though it, it does some of it doesn't look real at all. But the fact that it even went so far to even try and, and, and pull it off effectively, like this is one of those uh, cases, like if he went back and was to take this movie and take it and just add a little bit of CGI to the practical effects that are already there, this shit would look spot on real. Really. Like, 
and I think that is the way to go when it comes to using practical effects in CGI is like you can take the CGI and push it with the practical effects even further. Um, and the same thing with practical effects, you just push it right there over the line and get it into that, uh, that, that real texture look to it, you know? Because obviously those birds look like freaking mechanical birds, you know, that, that kind of stuff. It could easily be altered just a little bit with CGI. So I'm, in, in, in my opinion, I'm hoping, I've heard since 2018 that they're going to release this on a Blu-ray of some sort, and I haven't heard too much since then. I think it was going to be this one, it was going to be uh, Dead Alive, also known as Brain Dead, and it was going to be Meet the Feebles all get a Blu-ray release, and I have not seen them yet, to my knowledge. I have the DVDs of all three of them. Uh, I have a couple of them on VHS as well, so. But yeah, love this movie, and uh, that is my review. Please remember, coming up soon, I will also be re reviewing The Frighteners with After the Weekend, uh, After the Weekend, coming up pretty soon. I'll leave a link to their U to YouTube channel so you can watch us when that happens. And that is me, Defro, out.